In this video, we are going to look at finding probabilities of pulling cards out of a deck of cards. And this is going to test a little bit our theory of um, mutually exclusive versus independent. And also, I would strongly recommend that you try working on this entire worksheet before playing the video. Um, just like before in one of my other probability videos, this is one that's best done by yourself to see if you can do a, a good job. And if you look at the previous video, which talked about dice rolling, you'll see that these are very similar, um, except that instead of having a sample space of 36 possibilities, we have 52 pickup, which is the sample size of 52 cards in a normal deck of cards. There are no jokers here. We have four different suits. Those suits are heart, diamonds, spades, and clubs. And also they are cards marked two through 10. And then we have four jacks, queens, kings, and aces. So we're gonna find the probability of just getting an ace. Now again, pause the video. If you don't have this worksheet in front of you, if you just wanna try these problems out, pause the video before I do the problem and that way see if you can get the probability right. The probability of getting an ace is going to be looking at how many aces we have and we have a total of four aces here okay and then if we have four aces out of 52 um, I'm not gonna bother simplifying these fractions but I will get the decimal which is 0 0.077 which is 7.7 percent now getting a ace is a little bit tougher than just getting a club because there are many different clubs you can choose from. And since you have all those, the chances of getting a club would be 13 out of 52, or a quarter of the deck, 0.25, 25%. Now, getting the ace of clubs is a specific card. The ace of clubs would be this um, green zone right here. So you have a club ace, and that green zone that unfortunately bled a little bit up there, that green zone would be this one card over 52. So getting the one card out of the deck from a full deck of cards is 0 0.019 or 1.9%. Now the complement of that event, which is not getting the ace of clubs, so if this is the probability of CA, this would be the probability of CA prime. And the probability of not getting the ace of clubs would be 51 over 52, which is equal to the complement of 1.9%, or 0.981, which is 98.1%. Now, for getting a heart or an ace in one pull, it's probably best to highlight, first of all, all the hearts. Now this would be one that you may want to practice before I talk about it. So what are the chances of getting a heart or an ace in one pull out of a deck of 52 cards? So there are 13 hearts that I'm highlighting and there is four aces. So the chance of getting a heart or an ace, well, first of all, there are 13 hearts in a deck of cards. And there are four aces in the deck of cards. But there's one overlap right there at heart ace. So you would have to subtract that from your total possibilities. And this gives you 14, or sorry, 3 plus 1, which makes 4, or sorry, 3 plus 4, which makes 17, minus 1, which makes 16 out of 52 which is 0 0.308 or 30.8 percent. So another way to look at it is if you wanted to take a highlighter and just say okay I can choose all the hearts and all the aces you could just color you know count up all these green boxes. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 green boxes. Now let's talk about getting a three of clubs or a diamond. Now the three of clubs is just one card. 
Okay, so the three of clubs. Where's the three of clubs? Well, here's the three. Here's the club, three clubs. Now, it says, or a diamond. Okay, well, you'll notice that the diamonds are this row right here. You'll notice that these are mutually exclusive events, which means they had no overlap like the heart or an ace. And so when they're mutually exclusive, what's great about that is you can add up the number of getting the three of clubs, which is just one out of 52. And then you have a diamond, which is 13 out of 52. And that gives me 14 out of a 14 out of 52, which makes 0.269 or 26.9%. So the probabilities of getting a three club or a diamond in one pull makes that 26.9. So again, I could just count these up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And since there were no overlaps, I didn't have to worry about the double counting. For this example, we want to see about getting a heart or an ace or a nine in one pull from these cards. A heart, an ace, or a nine. What are your chances of pulling a heart, an ace, or a nine from 52 cards? Now this is going to be a little tricky because you're going to see that there's going to be possible some multiple overlaps. So let's first of all think about pulling a heart. There are 13 hearts in this deck of cards. Now an ace. How many aces are there? Well there are these four aces here. And then nines? Four nines. So here's what we have. How many hearts? Well if you just look at the purple uh, row, that would be 1352. Aces. How many aces did we have? Well, we had 4 out of 52. How many nines did we have? We had 4 out of 52 there. But then how many overlaps? Well, that overlap would then be 2. So we have to subtract those two overlaps, or we're counting more than we actually have. So 13 plus 4 is 17. 17 plus 4 is 21. Minus 2 is 1952, or 0 0.365, or 36.5%. So, looking at this next example, another way you could have done it without all the fractions, you could just count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. For a total of 19 circled out of an N of 52. Because that is our size of our area here. For our last part of this video, we're going to take a look at drawing hearts, spades, and clubs. But then do so in an independent way. So let's go take a look at that. So for next to our final example here, we're going to look at finding some probabilities of pulling a heart. Now a heart would be 13 out of 52. And a spade would be 13 out of 52. And a club would be 13 out of 52. This would be 25% chance of peace. Now one of the common mistakes people make is when they say like, we want to talk about pulling a heart, a spade, and a club in that order. Now what's tough about a problem like this is a lot of us get a little confused about this calculating probability or consecutive probabilities. All the way up until now we've just kind of looked at calculating probabilities with one instance. But now we have multiple instances. We want to know what is the chances of pulling a heart, then pulling a spade, then pulling a club. Now, what's important about that is that the chances of getting a heart would be 13 out of 52. The chances of then getting a spade would be 13 out of 51. So what has happened is that we've kept a card out because we're keeping this all in one event. We're making this a non-independent event because we've pulled a card out. 
then we have 13 out of 50 because if we have 13 out of 52 cards and we get that one heart the heart um, right there and then we get and now we have 51 cards in the deck because you know we're trying to get this spade here okay and in getting the spade then we have to get the club now we have these two cards out of the deck already so we only have 50 cards in the deck when we're trying to go for that club okay now to find the probability of getting a heart a spade and a club in that order we got to talk about this idea of independence now what we've shown here is by we've shown that these are not independent events because we have showed that we have to adjust the denominators each time but in doing so we can then use our multiplication rule to figure out what is the probability that these three things would happen in the row because we've adjusted for the changing of this situation we've adjusted for the denominator so now we can apply our multiplication rule and go 1350 seconds times 1350 firsts times 1350 ths which gives us 0 0.017 or 1.7 percent it's a very common mistake that someone would say like oh if there's a 25 percent chance of doing each of these events we would just add them up but that's not what happens when we want to have multiple events multiple events in a specific order will get multiplied so you've been used to like adding and subtracting this is a multiplication system here and then we're going to kind of do to end this video one little kind of um brain buster event right here which is about drawing one of each suit in any order and i do so because i like to make a tree chart out of this tree charts are going to show up in a future lesson so the more tree charts we build before the better so if we start a tree chart, you have basically one of three options. You can either get a heart, a spade, or a club. Now remember, we're not caring about the order, so we can do this in any order. But after you draw the heart, you can only draw the spade or the club. After you draw the spade, you can only draw the heart or the club. And after the club, you can only draw the spade or the heart, or the heart or the spade. So then, after you draw the heart or the spade, then you get a club. The heart or club, then spade. Spade, heart, then club. Spade, club, then heart. Spade, or sorry, club, spade, then heart. And then club, heart, then spade. Now what's cool about this tree diagram is it gives you if you follow the paths it gives you your set size so if you follow this path all the way on the left you can draw a heart spade and club if you follow the left path and then go to the right you get heart club spade this is about finding all the different ways you can draw one of each of these suits in any order then we go spade heart club and then spade club heart then we go club spade heart then club heart spade so what we have now is we have six possibilities and these six possibilities all have a chance of happening at 1.7% so if we take our 1.7% and multiply that by 6, then you get an answer of 10.2%. So your chances of getting a heart, spade, or club in any order would be 10.2%. But in that specific order where it was heart, spade, club, it would be 1.7%. And I do an example like this because, again, it kind of introduces a tree chart that is dependent instead of independent. It also gives us the idea to look at um, the, the existence of one versus many possibilities. And also it kind of does another multiplication percentage problem. So this was very challenging. This 
this end of this worksheet was very challenging. I still highly recommend that you, you know, get another copy of this and try this about an hour later, maybe two hours later, maybe eight hours later, and try to replicate all the problems that we did here because I think it would help getting some extra practice before you do the homework. And I strongly recommend practicing before the homework because sometimes getting to the homework is a little bit more challenging without the practice. It's like going to game day without practicing. So thank you again for watching, and we're going to go to our final video in session five, which is going to deal with more independent and mutually exclusive events, but in this case, instead of cards and dice, we'll be dealing with a story problem. Thank you for watching.